bit about an event coming up this weekend. May I? Ari, you're Please. on. Okay. Thank you. Oh, uh, well, this is a two-sided poster, so bear with me. Uh, this is sort of the uh, informational portion down here, and some of the things that uh, Fran was talking about, the karst plan, and this, see this bright little place here? That's, that's a critical recharge area that's not that critical. Well, Peace Weapon Prairie, Pinnacle Prairie, and where Hill Place Properties, or Hill Place Properties, Hill Place Properties are now have, have student apartments. Also, that extends over to the, the north edge of the uh, National Cemetery, where they're currently digging more than eight feet deep for grave sites. Hmm. And they're going to put gravel at the bottom and then some engineered or structural soil or whatever before coffins go in. And then they have, uh, but they were nice enough to say they're storing the, the by the way, I have a picture here. I, I'm standing down in the, the dugout area, and this is level with my head or a little higher. You notice this is black soil. There's no dirt. There's no rock in it right through there. And then the clay begins. And there was, I saw a little stone poking out from the clay. But that's classic uh, prairie structure that, Chris, I know you're familiar with and some of the others. And, uh, They've taken all of this and that much of that to make these things eight feet deep. And this is actually not a grave itself right here. This is where the, what they're going to pay for an entryway from Hill Avenue to the cemetery. So you see other places, the, as, as friend was saying, the, the brighter it is, the more critical recharge it is, more likely it's over a bedrock fault. And this is a little discussion of, of some of that material. Uh, this shows World Peace Wetland Prairie and the Hill Place Parkland that has been determined what it's going to be. It's part, it's, uh, it's former prairie, um, but it was more historically in the last 50 years it would have been savannah with big oak trees primarily a lot of things. And then this is the Pinnacle Foods, uh, somebody mentioned last month, this little strip right here, Pinnacle Foods, where the, the new trail is cut out, was, was dug out to be a road. And with the new development coming, they built a bridge across the creek for automobiles where they first, as the bridge, had built a, a bridge for walking traffic only. So this meant that they didn't really need this. So we, we go to city council and say, please let these guys save some money and just build a trailer instead. And that's what happened. So we now got a paved trail around here so you can, you can come from this direction or wherever and walk out here on this beautiful open prairie that's been brush hogged for decades. Last year, in order to have, um, uh, well, first I should say this has grown up in here more than we wanted it to. It's already got more little trees coming up than we want, but we don't own it. And the city doesn't own it. So um, until maybe the mayor can work out a, a follow up on the promise that they once made about four or five years ago to originally to to give us that land since it was being cut off from their property anyway, it was stripped. And it's got all the classic uh, wetland plants out there. You know, patches and sort of, you know, all the drainage ways wherever you have button bushes. And always with the button bushes, you'll have a green ash or two when come up next to them. One of these things is got on. And then the, uh, so the drainage came all, all across from different ways. It, it even drains down from of all this down there and goes right through there and threatens to flood more over here. And you remember well, some months ago, a young man came with me, talked about his house flooding a little bit. And uh, that, that drainage from over here, if this were ever developed, um, and it got to be a bigger flow, the drainage coming down there goes right up a, a, onto his property. In other words, here's the main town branch, and that little drain comes down here and it floods. It pushes the town branch water right up to his house and around it. And that's what he got to experience within two months after buying the house and not knowing about it. So all of these things are so important for, for stormwater 
control and protection of people in the watershed and living other living things. But out here in another shot, let's see, oh, the 1965 aerial view, you can see these bumps. This is what Bruce described in his government channel shows as prayer temples. And though that's this this part is is a uh, let's see. Yeah, this part is still available, still serving as wetland growing off the wild things. Up further here, it's now paved and lots of fill dirt leveled and, and destroyed. But let's see, what are some of the other critics? Well, that's the educational part of this side. Um, one of my favorite things is I've got a whole I've got 83 shots of this the groundhog eating uh, ambrosia, giant ragweed, some people call it. The wild thing, it gets 25 feet tall in our yard some years when it's wet. And then it comes up in April, this, you see it first this big, you know. You gotta get rid of those stems to get this big around sometimes. In between, unless you want it to just be a thicket of dead stems. But anyway, these guys, this guy just kept turning. He used a little paw like a monkey to grab the plants and pull them down. And so this is actually on the edge of World Peace Wet and Prairie, but I made this from inside my back door. I just stood there and got lucky. And, and so usually when I see him out on the WPWP, they're scooting away from me, but he, he just kept eating. They'll also eat your other things. We've got this stuff, they'll, they'll look at this, the rabbits do too. Okay, this is uh, some of the wild native grass in the area, and this is the uh, layout of World Peace Wild Prairie. Goats are great things to eat. Honeysuckle, we're going to have some again this Sunday, maybe just one or two on the leash because we don't have a pin up to put them in. We, uh, this is two, three years ago, and we had a big pin borrowed, and we would dismantle it and take one part over here and then bring this part around here move it to a whole new place. So I had this one goat stay instead of all of them. But he's very tame and he stayed for, uh, I guess a week or more. And he drove me crazy. He would jump out of the pen if I left, if I got out of his sight, and come around to the driveway and come up and want to get in the backyard. Because I had him use the dog pen and put hay in there for him. So as soon as I walked up, he figured it was time to go home. Anyhow, a few other things, the international aspects of World Peace and Weapon Prairie. We've got students from India there a couple of years ago um, um, planting some things. And this is one of the state um, naturalists. Um, he uh, works, or I think he's retired now, from the um, Natural Heritage Commission, but he's he's a real prairie expert. He was out there saying, "Well, this, this, yeah, here's this native, and here's that native." And the wonderful thing was, wherever we identified some natives and we removed some more honeysuckle in those early years, um, we would see more wild things come up. Sometimes within two weeks after you got all the honeysuckle out, maybe some of the green briars and other things are out there. You would have native plants coming up and they bloom very rapidly in the growing season. So that's the hard way to restore prairie. Um, Chris will tell you the Nature Conservancy would burn it all down and, and hope for the best that it comes back because this is very intensive what uh, um, a lot of people do. Uh, I'll just show you on the back, digging it out by hand there, there are people working on it. If I can turn this around safely, well, and, and Aubrey, would you tell the committee what's happening this weekend? Okay. Oh, that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep turning, Aubrey. Keep turning. <laughs> I love this place so much, and there's so much uh, to enjoy. I love sharing it, and I love you to come out and look in person. But we have birthday at World Peace Wild Prairie this Sunday, the 18th, and uh, it'll be from 1 to 5 p.m. We we planned it on Sunday in the afternoon hours between church and church. But the other day a man told me, I gave him one, he said, well, I, I can't, I don't know, I'll be there. I said, oh, why? I'll be in church. I said, well, that's what we said in the middle of the afternoon. He said, but, but I go at 2 p.m. 
I don't know what trade you kept. This one of the big indicators of, of uh, Wetland Prairie <clears throat> in the Ozarks. It's uh, called an Ozark burrowing crawfish or a Osage, depending on whose website and book you're reading, I guess. And those guys live not in the groundwater deep in the caverns, they live in the that layer of black soil we saw on the other side. And they usually have burrows a few feet apart so that they have two escape routes. I guess if a snake goes this way, he goes that way. But uh, when, when the ground's wet, when it rains a lot, they get flooded and they'll be outside their burrows and as soon as you, you watch, you know, as soon as the water starts settling down after the rain stops, they'll just turn up. And I've got pictures of one turning its flippers, his tail up in the air and going back in one of the holes. But I've also got a few pictures from last year of uh, he picked one up and discovered it's a female and her lower lower nether parts are just covered with little um, tiny baby crawling. So mm -hmm. I've got some good pictures of those. We didn't pull one out. I, had, I didn't dig enough when we were putting this together. Lauren Hawkins designed it and uh, she just took any picture that said EXL, EX, EL, or whatever I'm right at the end of one I think is, is going to blow up. You know. So somebody here might be able to tell me what this caterpillar is and, and which fruit trees blossom this is, and that's a, uh, is that a kind of a frillary? Looks like a frillary. And uh, swallowtail and native thistle. Not all of this was bad, despite what some farmers are saying. And people gathered enjoying the day. Uh, what kind of bird? Cedar wax wings. Cedar, wings. Cedar wax wings, thank you. And a couple, I thought we had more than one, but there are several colors and varieties of um, wonderful, uh, excuse me. Dragonflies. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody recognize the bird? That's not a great picture. Cat bird. And they're very elusive when I'm holding the camera. So I've got better pictures, but um, that's as close to as good as I get usually. Uh, Cindy knows all about these. Monarchs, you bet. <laughs> Why keep monarchs? Some milkweed in your yard. This plant is one of my favorites. It's a honeysuckle you want to try to protect instead of cut. You see how the leaves, it looks like four slots, and it comes out the center of those, it, what would normally be two leaves. And that's the native honeysuckle, a lot of cereal, super vitamins. And right now, very few places, Northwest Arkansas, have any in bloom. I've looked around other places, and it won't be swept and pretty. There'll just be little bitty things that are barely starting to turn red, maybe by Sunday. They're very small. And, uh, yes, if you always see pictures of uh, um, hummingbirds around these. Yeah. Actually, you can stand there all day and you don't see hummingbirds sometimes. <laughs> but by the line, that's one of our great bird watchers in this region. You probably know of him. He's helped Joe Neal and write into books and things. Um, woodpeckers and my other famous favorite first love plant is, is the button bush. That's one. That, now this picture or some more of mine uh, on Flickr have been requested by people for rain gardens because they grow with their feet in the water. If you go to Lake Conway and our lake or uh, pass over Lake Conway going toward Little Rock. On your right, there's a big shallow area. And those things growing out there are button bushes. They may be several feet tall and they're several feet in the water. And they, uh, that area dries up sometimes, so that plants get a start. But, but they survive and they'll find. So you find these in ditches and places you wouldn't imagine in Northwest Arkansas. Well, at Beaver Lake, they have a lot of Beaver Lake on our property. And, yeah. They're either wet feet or dry or they live. They live, yeah. So they, they can tolerate a lot of that. Uh, okay, we're going to need to this wrap guy, this up here. So okay. I've already ordered okay. six. This guy <laughs> showed up. This is two year old picture on Earth Day or on our celebration day of Earth Day. And guess what? I was just talking about him and out on our recycling bin. Maybe the same one, like he heard me talking about it and came over. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a different tree frog. And thank you, 1 to 5 p.m. Sunday, 
April 18. South Bend. And just one, one real quick note, I, as Aubrey was talking, uh, as Chair Fayetteville and Bloom, the judges will be here June 14th and 15th, but the OLLI Gallery, the Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, they're going to have the Fayetteville and Bloom Gallery the entire month of June. Everything about Fayetteville and Bloom, and Greg, I want to talk to you about getting something, and I'll get a laminate or whatever, and that we can put on display regarding urban forestry, because that's one of the A criteria. So be thinking about what we could put up to represent our committee. Are you going to put the Clever Creek planting on that, on the tour for urban forestry? Don't know. Um, we're going to be, I mean, you know, we only have two days, so. Right, I know. They used to take them to our neighborhood's planting in Gully, but it's pretty big now, so. Wait, I want to take them out to the uh, Gully Restoration area. Well, the neighborhood's planting is on the west side of the park before you get to whatever that is, a wire. Okay. Uh, it, it was a big open space, and so between the ponds and the trail, that's where that neighborhood's planting is. So. Okay, great. All right. There's I, one at Walford, too. Okay. Well, I'm, I'll email you and try to get some more uh, specific information on that. Sometimes we just might drive by and point out what we're doing well, at Clower Creek or. Okay. Um, I think we're adjourned. <laughs>